Hi everyone, this is Ishika Kesarwani speaking and I welcome you all to the Tech Podcast. Today, we are having Naveen Verma, a Senior DevOps Consultant at Opstree Solutions. We can first start with your introduction. Thanks Ishika. Hi everyone. It's a pleasure to be on this podcast. And to start off, as Ishika just mentioned, I'm currently associated with Opstree Solutions. And along with that, I'm also associated with the Azure developer community from Gurgaon region. So it's been some time now that I've associated with the community. So a crisp about myself would be, yes, I am majorly involved with DevOps and cloud technologies, Azure being my primary cloud. And apart from cloud and DevOps, from the BAU, I do lead a team where we publish open source Terraform modules for Azure. We have multiple Terraform modules published in the official Terraform repository from Opstree itself. And apart from that, I have been involved with Azure developer community now. So I've done quite some workshops, a lot of sessions, a podcast. So, you know, the experience has been really nice and a lot of opportunities that I've gathered in my tenure till now. So things have been pretty wonderful. And yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Okay, so you said that you're a part of the Azure developers community. So Mm -hmm. how did you get to know about it and what all opportunities have you received being a part of this community? Yeah, that's actually interesting. So when we initially started working in Azure space in my organization, so we started off with uh, some little initiatives where we started publishing weekly updates from Azure, what's been going on in the community, what new is coming up in Azure. And you know, then we started this initiative of Terraform modules in Azure as well. So these were the two initial initiatives that we started off. And yes, by going through and you know exploring, we came across the Azure developer community that yes, there is one official body which takes care of all these initiatives and it was pretty enticing when I came across it and then I applied for being a member and then you know considering the community work and the things that we were doing apart from BAU helped me get into the community and since I've joined the community I believe it was last year so post that I have received a lot of opportunities a lot of public speakings I've done a lot of public workshops, a lot of podcasts. So, you know, I've interacted with really great people from this community and I have given my insights and I've received a lot of insights from those guys as well. So it's been wonderful. And yes, it's still amazing, you know, considering the fact that yes, right now also I'm in one of the podcasts from the community itself. So it's really, uh, really a great experience for me till now and I'm really looking forward to have a lot more opportunities like this in the future. Well, that's really good. Also, like uh, you've been working with the Azure services for quite Mm -hmm. a long time now. So, I mean, uh, how did you get started with it? Like, was it a part of your college curriculum or just something that a project needed? All right. So funny thing, when I was in college, cloud and DevOps were the last thing that I would know about. The only verticals we knew about were development, testing, and database. So these were the only three verticals for us when we graduated. And when I was in my first organization and we were going through our training phase and then, you know, there was the team segregations that all the new joiners will now be bifurcated in their teams. So that is when I came across the term DevOps. And trust me, everybody, including, you know, the folks that were there training us, it was a new term for them as well. So we all left everything what we were doing and everybody in that room started investigating what actually is DevOps. So we left all our assignments and we just started Googling what is DevOps first. Let's get the meaning there. So from there, I started into DevOps. I came across different tools in DevOps. And till then, I was not very much interacting with the cloud computing technologies. Once I did my switch, I joined Opstree, then I came across these cloud technologies as well. 
I came across AWS. To be very honest, AWS was the first cloud I came across because you know everybody was talking about cloud at AWS, cloud at at AWS. And when I joined Opsri, then you know we explored a lot more here. I got to know that okay, apart from AWS, we have different clouds. Then Azure caught my eye, and I started investigating. I started learning Azure from there. Then you know once I had some grasp over it. we started having projects i started getting involved in azure projects and from there on my actual azure journey started and till now i am majorly involved in the projects comprising of azure i do have projects with me where they are having aws as their cloud but yes azure is the primary cloud so in all my projects i am having azure my primary cloud so yes this is how my azure journey started initially and right now it's pretty wonderful i've explored a lot of services here and it's really great the concept is really nice yeah although like nowadays a lot of colleges are coming up with some specializations and they are somehow focusing on cloud or devops actually Definitely. but then again like what about the colleges that don't have it like if the student wants to get into this mm-hmm. and if he or she gives the interview so what will be the prerequisite requisites that the company will be expecting from them because you know the company can't expect them to know everything so like will the certifications will matter the azure certificates that they might apply for see definitely you have a very valid argument here the organization cannot expect a college graduate to know anything and everything same goes for the college graduate as well the person cannot expect to grasp anything and everything in devops and cloud so it is something the organization has to keep in mind as well as the college graduate has to keep in mind as well if you are going into 10 different things and you are not having the basics or the chronology of those 10 components clear it will not benefit you that much on the contrary let's say if i'm going into just five components or four components but i have a firm grasp on what those components are for what they are catering to and how can i best utilize them that will in turn definitely benefit me so the ideology behind getting into devops or cloud is not to go behind uh, a plethora of tools it's first of all you have to understand the functionality of devops what exactly it is and how it works and in each and every area you can pick just one tech and you can continue with that and if i talk about trends nowadays so things yes definitely have changed from the time when i started so when i started there were i would say a handful of tools which were practically ruling the market so namely it was jenkins was there and you know linux is anyhow there and you have your git so these were the major tools which you will hear everywhere these tools are practically very mature right now and they are currently being utilized however now the organizations have shifted their mindset a little so now since almost major part of the industry is moving towards cloud so they do expect a certain touch of cloud technology to be there with the candidate so instead of you know going for all the devops tools you can have one cloud start with a single cloud don't go to a bunch of clouds because behind the scenes every cloud is doing the same functionality just the terminologies are different if i talk about let's say azure and aws azure also provides you virtual machines aws also provides you virtual machines the only difference is azure calls them virtual machines aws calls them ec2 so it's just the difference of name you know uh, speaking something in english and speaking something in french so they all mean the same in the end so it's just focus on one cloud go through the technologies see where your interest falls so definitely have one cloud component in your arsenal and apart from that any operating system and there is one conception among people that i have seen i've seen it uh, in a lot of people they think if you don't know linux you cannot get into devops so linux is 
definitely a very integral component of devops you know in some of the definitions you'll see that yes it started from linux admin so all the linux admin started going into devops first but i would not completely agree to that statement linux is not the only operating system in the market you have windows as well and if you have a very firm grasp on windows operating system you can definitely and very well go into devops as well so it is not like if i have been a windows person i cannot go into devops that is not true so it is all about having your basics clear so any operating system which you feel like you're comfortable with and any cloud which you feel like you're comfortable talking about certification certifications on a certain extent do help but when you are starting off i would recommend that you get some practical exposure first get some practical exposure complete the devops pipeline the entire cycle with even if a single tool you have your version controlling system then you have something to build your project you have a integration and deployment tool one configuration management tool and you know containerization is something which is running parallel with the cloud so as the organizations are migrating towards cloud they are also migrating towards container orchestration as well so keeping that in mind all these tech you can have in your arsenal and once you are comfortable that if i give you a task me being the organization if i handle you a task if even if you're not able to achieve the task 100% you should be able to understand the task and come up with a solution so once you have that understanding having a certification becomes a cherry on the top so you can definitely go for a beginner level certification in the starting and then you can proceed ahead based on your interest to the specialization yeah that makes sense uh so like if you have to um elaborate devops in one sentence what will it be all right so there are a lot of definitions for devops there are different terminologies used for devops so what i believe it's a cultural evolution of technology in my aspect what i have seen and what i have experienced so devops is not only about tools devops is not only about using cloud devops is more focused towards culturally evolving the way you utilize your technology when we talk about things which have you which used to happen let's say 10 years from now so 10 years ago we were majorly focused on waterfall model we will have a huge monolith application that application will be built once it's built it will be deployed it will be tested the developers will be getting the feedbacks after months then they have to go through their entire code again then they'll again you know make the changes give it to qas qas will again go through all the documentations because right now they are also rusty so they will also go through what their findings were then they test it again and then you know this to and fro used to happen now when we talk about devops so things are more connected teams are more integrated with each other so the cultural evolution has happened now whatsoever a developer is doing the testing or the qa guy knows about it in whatsoever environment a developer is working that same environment is present with the qa so there are no knowledge gaps there are no environmental gaps there are continuous feedback loops so as soon as something goes south you are notified right away so you can take a step back fix that and you can proceed ahead so i would say it is more of a cultural evolution of technology how you better utilize and optimize it yeah i mean there's always something coming up with time Absolutely. and it's just making the whole process so much easier for us of course yeah so like on your point of view how's the future trend of devops in particular and with cloud also uh so if we talk about the future of devops and cloud technologies as a whole things these days are progressing really fast because everybody wants to do or perform their execution in real time nobody wants to wait that first i will do my ingestion or first i will have my executions done then i will visualize or analyze them and then i'll take the next step right now what the organization are more focused towards is things have to be reactive enough 
that as soon as an event happens i should get the outcome or i should get the next event happening so the real time ingestion of data the real time parsing of data we have multiple tools in place so things are evolving toward real time technology so you, for instance you have kafka for you know real time streaming and a lot of services are coming into the picture so this is what right now the trends are and if we talk about devops so devops is also evolving in the same fashion all these new tools and techs fall under the scope of devops these days so being a devops engineer you also have to evolve yourself continuously so you are at par with the continuously evolving technology you should know how you can better optimize your pipelines so that your pipelines are coping up with the uh, real time uh, ingestion or tracking mechanisms my pipeline should be optimized enough so that uh, my wait time is reduced i can get better results i can get my components up and running So if I talk about, for instance, Azure do offer a lot of new services in this space. So AI is, you know, AI ML is something which is pretty much the future these days of the technology. This is where every technology is going. Everybody wants things real time. They want their applications. They want their machines to be reactive enough. So if anything is happening and nobody is there to monitor. even then my application or my machine should be able to handle that situation things have to be more robust things have to be more scalable so if we talk about an ai ml space as you do offers us cognitive services we have facial recognition api so most of the organizations one of my projects right now they are working in this space they are utilizing the azure facial apis to incorporate it in in their system so you know you can better track the facial expressions of any candidate you are encountering so even if it is a uh, you know a uh, virtually proctored discussion a real human being is not sitting in front of you the ai would be proctoring you the ai would be there monitoring your every movement your every facial expression based on those apis so this is how much the technology has evolved and you know there is you know as we have always been saying sky is the limit so that is practically what is happening these days so a lot is uh, a lot of it is changing and if we talk about cloud evolution so there are a lot of new things coming up as we are just discussing ai and ml so in the same fashion we have iot also going in place so you know now i can even control my fan from my smartphone i don't have to go towards the switch box and you know turn the switch on i can just tap my app or you know give a voice command to my application and you know just turn on my fan making this more and more easier day by day so that is one more thing and in cloud space there is something as called as you know edge computing is coming into the picture so all these real time receivers that we are having these days so almost all the electronic gadgets are you know getting iot enabled these days so if i take the example of iot so edge computing is something which is coming into the picture because you know having a cloud data center is a more centralized approach where all my servers or my racks are placed in a big landscape all the telemetry that i am getting all the data that i am getting from my receivers are transported over the internet to that particular data center and once they have reached that data center that data would be parsed analyzed and then the next operation would happen what edge computing is bringing on the plate is edge computing suggests that we go more decentralized meaning wheresoever i am having my receivers wheresoever i am having my gadgets my compute and my storage should reside right there in that receiver or in that proximity so what benefit it brings us is the first and the best benefit is exponentially reduced latencies in first scenario where i am having a centralized data center my telemetry is going from say delhi to uh, east us where my data center resides in the second scenario my telemetry is going from my receiver to my laptop that is placed right next to it so 
this exponentially reduced latency helped my uh, wait time reduce exponentially helping me to process that telemetry analyze that data and further help it function or get the results faster so that is what the new evolutions are going in cloud space so in the same fashion we have fog computing as well fog computing is also the similar concept where we are decentralizing our data centers the compute and storage is placed in the lan setup of my machine that means it is in the same proximity but not as close as edge computing so the only difference is where the processing is happening if we talk about edge computing it is practically in the same device which is receiving the data and when we talk about fog computing it is in the same network where my device is placed so these are some of the new evolutions that are going on and a lot of organizations are slowly and gradually planning to move towards edge computing and fog computing because you know they require that fast computing powers they require that fast turnaround times so yes this is what i would say is you know going on these days yeah i really feel that it is at the booming right now and again yeah. there's always something coming up and the future will definitely re- definitely definitely be really nice with it anyways um uh, are there any tips from your end from your journey that you have learned Uh, for the listeners that you that you would like to share uh so when we talk about tips and tricks so the only thing that i would like to suggest to all the viewers is whatsoever you are pursuing or you know whatsoever your major right now is always always make sure you explore the technology yourself first it is completely fine that you get suggestions from people however just do not only rely on those suggestions get the suggestions explore things on your own see where your interest falls and then start exploring things all right if i explicitly talk about devops and cloud the domain in which i am working so in that case and in that domain make sure you understand the cycle when we first if we take devops understand what devops is catering to devops is not not just about tools devops is about the mindset that you have in order to make your it operations much more smooth so that is the actual chronology behind devops so you know tools will keep on coming tools will keep on decommissioning we have i don't know a plethora of tools right now that falls under the scope of devops if i talk about just a continuous integration server there are a bunch of tools which i can choose from so it is something i should know based on my requirement which tool best suits my environment that is what i should have in my mind that clarity is very important when we talk about devops you should understand your system you should have that reactive mindset actually so you can you know take care of those scenarios you can have the pipelines or your technological architecture streamlined at its best so just don't focus on the tools focus on the complete pipeline how the things flow what is the actual mechanism behind devops pick the tools wisely and then start exploring and the similar concept goes with cloud explore your clouds so one thing that i personally feel like after working for such a long time in azure so i might be a bit azure biased but yes that this is more towards azure and it's my personal opinion so one thing that i like is things are a bit more organized so if i take a base level example in azure you'll get the concept of resource groups and it is a very simple yet very effective component that uh, they have brought into the picture very effective in the sense now i can group all my components all my services under a single umbrella so i don't have to go and search my entire cloud to look for a simple virtual machine where was it i can have all my services listed under one umbrella and i can directly go into that resource group and check whatsoever i am gathering here 
whatsoever i am getting based on my environment it can be based on my project anything and everything i can have those bifurcations and it actually helps us get the better results and you know better organize my services there so yes so this would be my tips for the you know for the viewers so first always always remember to explore the tech and then get into it so if you are a beginner a beginner level certification will do do not go for the specialization yet because once you start working into the industry it is very uh, likely to happen that your interest might switch so let's say right now i am thinking i want to be a devops engineer build and release engineer all right and i am doing certain level of certifications there i plan linux certification i plan uh, jenkins certification however when i started working in the industry i started to grow a liking towards security now i want to be a security engineer so there are specializations in security as well so beginner level certification for all the beginners all the graduates who are freshly starting their careers in the industry beginner level certifications are good when you start working into the industry you start gelling up yourself with the system then you will better analyze what your interests are falling towards and then you can plan your specializations and not just your specializations you can have your entire road map created at that point of time and then you can start pursuing that road map so that is what i would like to share with everybody yeah so basically like it's just like you should never stop exploring because there is so much in the trend right now and you can literally go and explore all the technologies absolutely yeah, so, so it is you know very well said so when you are working in technology and it's not just for devops and cloud any technical domain that you working in you have to make sure you are on the edge you should be updated with what is going on because if you don't have that data just like the technology you will be outdated in no time so make sure you are keeping yourself updated all the time very well said so on that note we can wrap up today's session thank you so much for taking out your time sir and it was indeed a very insightful session and to all the listeners thank you so much for joining and stay tuned because we're going to come up with many more videos like this bye bye thank you thank you ishika thanks everyone